so basic introduction to radar plotting then. For all of these questions that we're going to do, the plot revolves around a 20 minute plot, where at 1200 the target was bearing 030 at 10 miles, at 1220 it was 030 at 6 miles, and in between the 1210 there it would have been 030 at 8 miles. Our vessel is heading north at 12 knots throughout. So, you don't have to use triangles, personally I prefer them, but if you want to use parallel rulers, roller rulers, whatever you want, that's fine. So, the first one, 0, 3, 0, 10 miles. So we measure that, and we plot it out. The second one was 0, 3, 0, 8 miles, and the final one, 0, 3, 0, at 6 miles. So plot all three of those, and then join them up to get your O2A line. I'm going to do it in pen so it shows up a bit better on the camera. It doesn't necessarily work out as accurate to do it in pen. You'll be much better with a nice sharp pencil, but pencil unfortunately isn't the best at showing up sometimes on this camera. So that gives us O, the origin of the plot, where it originally was at the start time, and A, the actual position of the vessel at the end of the plot. The next thing to do in a radar plot is we lay off our course and speed on our WO line. WO is way of own. Now, to do that, what we do is have to find out for the duration of the plot how far we travelled. So in this example here, we were doing 12 knots. So 12 divided by an hour divided by 60 tells us that every single minute we went 0 0.2 of a mile and then we times it by the plot interval in this case 20 to get four miles okay so to get your wo it's your speed divided by 60 times the plot interval so in this case four miles and you lay that back reciprocally from o for what the vessel's course was so we were heading due north, so from O, we're going to lay back 180, 4 knots. Okay. Always make sure you've got it nice and tidy and parallels and things like that when you're doing it. Slight little differences can make all sorts of errors with radar plotting. Put nicely in O there, draw it back, and that gives us point W. Now, to complete the triangle, all we do is join W to A. What I like to do, as soon as I join W to A, before I do anything else, is take it down and read off what the course was. So here I've got 284. Okay, so that was, we'll call it vessel A, that was its heading. So its course, straight away, I know it was 284. Okay, That way, I've got no more errors of what I moved the lines after I drew the line in and so on. I joined those lines up. I paralleled them at the same time. I know I've not read that off wrong. Okay. So WO, we have one. WA, we have another. To get the speed of the other vessel, what I do is I measure WA. Okay, WA, in this case, when I measure that, just make sure we get it right, comes out as 2.2 miles. So that means in 20 minutes, I've done 2.2 miles. So what I do is I do 2.2 divided by the plot interval times by 60. Okay, so that gives me 6.6 .6 miles, 6.6 uh, .6 knots, sorry. So my course was 284. We'll just write it all down at the top there. Speed was 6.6. .6, and we could get an aspect as well. Now, CPA and TCPA. Okay. CPA, what we do is we extend the OA line towards the center of the plot. Now, in this case, it was on 0, 3, 0 for all three, so it's obviously going to have a CPA of 0. If it didn't, suppose it came down here somewhere, just as a rough sketch, 
just to show the concept of it. That way line came all the way down. You don't have to draw it all the way in, just near the origin so you can get the perpendicular line would be sufficient. And what you do to get the CPA, whenever it passes it, you put a line in like that and you measure that perpendicular distance from the center of the plot to the line. Okay, that would be the CPA of a vessel if it was not there. Okay, TCPA, what we do is we use one formula for that. A to CPA divided by O to A times the plot interval. Okay, we use that concept. We might have different A's and A1's and A2's. We might have O1's and A's and O2's and A's and so on. But it's still the same concept. O to A is how far you travelled in the plot interval. A to CPA, whichever one it is, is how far you had to travel to get to where you were going. So what you do, you divide A to CPA by OA. And that gives you a factor of how many times of the plot length you need to get there. So you then times it by the plot interval to get your TCPA. So, for example, in this one, A to CPA was going to be 6.0 miles divided by 4.0 miles times 20 minute plot interval. So we do 6 divided by 4 gives us 1.5. What that's saying is we've got 1.5 times the distance there of that line. And if that line was in 20 minutes times it by 20 minutes, that tells us how it is. So A to CPA, 6 divided by O to A, 4 times 20 gives us 30 minutes. TCPA is 30 minutes. Now that's TCPA. TCPA is time to CPA. Time of CPA, you would add that to the time of the last point of the plot. So A in this case was 1220. Uh, 12 so to get the time of CPA, you'd do 1220 plus 30 to get 1250. Right, the final one, aspect. Aspect is the relative bearing of the cross in the middle from the other vessel to either port or starboard. Rather than being clockwise all the time, it's either clockwise or anti-clockwise, depending what side it's on. The principle of aspect is to find out if we're overtaking them or not. Okay? If you imagine you're 22 and a half degrees abaft the beam of somebody else, you are 112 and a half degrees from their head. So if that was their ship's head, you'd be right round here. Not there. Okay. So if we knew you were coming up astern of that, then that means your aspect is more than that and you're overtaking them. That's why we want to find out aspect. So what we do, a nice easy way of sort of picturing it, WA is their vector if you extended it. Draw a little ship on. Okay. You don't have to do this in the exam, but you're not going to lose marks if you do. I still like to do it sometimes. Aspect is the angle between their heading, the 284, and the bearing of the cross in the middle from A. In other words, that angle there. Okay. The easiest way to get this is when you read off what their course was, put a mark like I did there, saying heading. And then from point A of the other vessel, read off the bearing of the cross in the middle. Okay, and I just call it aspect of A. And then what you do is you literally just count the degrees. Don't try and make it complicated. You've got a compass rose in front of you. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 1, 2, 3, 4. 74 degrees. And now we need to determine, is it red or green? Well, what you do, put yourself back on that ship. You're heading that way. Was the cross on port or starboard? Well, it was to port. So if you were reporting to the captain on the other ship, the captain said, what's the relative bearing of that cross? How many degrees on the port side is it, or starboard side? You'd say, well, it's 74 degrees to port, captain. And that's all it is. And that is how you get aspect. Red, 74 degrees. It is not an extension of the OA line. It's just the bearing of the cross in the middle from point A. Okay, that's all it is. 
Right. So, a couple of things that we might need to do with radar plots then. Okay, they do have lots of different tricks they ask us. So, bring a blank plot in just so we've got it. The first one they might ask us instantaneous alter course to get a given CPA. In other words, they've said, okay, determine the alteration of course required to get a CPA of two miles. So what we're going to do is we start by drawing in the CPA required. In this case, I'm just going for two miles. Okay. We plot a circle of two miles around the centre of the plotting sheet. And we've got our OWA triangle. This is just the same triangle as we had. I've just scanned it so it keeps it nice and clean for showing it. Okay. Now, wrestle on my starboard bow, assuming it's rule 19 restricted visibility, shall as far as possible avoid an alteration of course to port for a vessel forward of the beam of the overtaking. We're not overtaking it, it's clearly crossing. So I'm going to go to starboard. So what I would do is join point A to the tangent of that circle. What that gives me is the new relative line of approach I want that vessel to take. It came from O down to A. Now I wanted to go along that line and pass two miles off to my port because I went to start it. Okay. Then what I do is I take that line and I extend it through the original triangle. Okay. Now, what I then do is say, right, I'm only changing my course, not my speed. So I put the pin of my compass in W and I line up WO because I'm not changing speed. So WO, the wave on, is going to be the same length and I arc it round. And that there gives me O1. And when I join W to O1, what I end up with then is my new course to steer. So what I do, I measure that. And I get 0 to 6. Okay, so my new course was 0 to 6. Now we have to be careful. Sometimes the examiner will be sneaky and say, determine the alteration of course. And other times they will say, what's the course required? So what we do, we make sure we say either my new course is 026 or my alteration of course required was 26 degrees to starboard. Cover ourselves here and say both. I would alter 26 degrees to starboard to steer a new course of 026. And that there is how we get the course required to maintain a CPA of two miles with another vessel. Now, sometimes they'll ask something similar, but they'll say, right, let's do it for speed instead. OK, I want you to change your speed to maintain a CPA of two miles rather than an alteration, of course. So what we do, same concept, we want a two mile given CPA. So we draw two mile circle around the center of the plot. And just like last time, what I do is I join A to that point. When I slow down, that vessel is going to cross more ahead of me. If I sped up, it will come down this side. You could equally speed up for it, but it's unlikely. So slowing down, went across more ahead. Again, that gives me the new relative line of approach of that vessel. It's coming down like this. As I slow down, it's going to open up and pass more ahead of me. Great. Then what I do, again, I extend this line back through the original triangle. This time, for slowing down, O1 is where it crosses the original WO line. Okay. And what I do, WO1 is now the wave on for my new speed. So I measure WO1. In this case, I've got 2.2 miles. So what I do, I do 
W01 is my speed in 20 minutes. So just like I did for getting WA, I do what was WO, 2.2, divided by 20 times by 60. That tells me my new speed is 6.6 .6 knots. Okay. Now, similarly, you may be asked, what was the reduction in speed? It's always a good idea to check that anyway. So that comes out as 1.8. So you do the reduction of speed was the difference between O and O1, which in this case was 5.4 knots, which works out quite nicely. And I can check that I've done my plot right, because if the reduction was 5.4 and my new speed was 6.6, it's nice that they add up to the 12 knots that I originally had. OK, so I'm going to reduce by 5.4 knots to proceed at a new speed of 6.6 .6 knots. Okay, and that there is how we would do a reduction of speed instantaneously to get a given CPA. Now, what they may ask is a delayed time alteration of course or speed so as to get a CPA of a certain amount again, such as two miles. So what we do for that is we say, right, OK. I need again my two mile minimum CPA. OK, so what I do is I take my compass. Put the point in there. Measure my two miles, draw the circle around the center of the plotting sheet. That gives me my two miles. Now, the question would have to specify how delayed time the alteration had to be. So I'm going to say it was going to be 1225 because my plot was 1200 to 1225. So what I have to do is accept that the vessel was there at 1200. It's there at 1225. Uh, sorry, there at 1220. If nothing's changed, it's going to keep coming till 1225 down that line all the way to the center until my point of CPA. So what I do is I say, well, how much further would it have came in that time? So what I do is I measure OA, which in this case we know was four miles. We divide it by the plot interval. And then we times it by the time difference we want, which in this case was five minutes, because I've said 1225. So OA was four miles divided by 20 times by five gives me one mile. What that means is I would have had the vessel physically at a position there at 1225. OK, so that was the position of the vessel at 1225. We're going to call that A1. OK. Now what we do, we join that point to the tangent of the circle in the same way as last time. We treat it the same. Notice I haven't joined anything to the original triangle. This now is my new line of approach. It was at O, it came down to A, and it kept coming to A1. Then I altered course, and it goes along this line here to maintain a CPA of two miles. What I now do is take that line and I parallel it back up through the original triangle. Okay, from A across. Okay, so it's now totally separate to this line here. What that means is my plot interval remains at 20 minutes. So I can just keep my original WO measure W to O, arc it round, and that gives me O1. Now what I do is I join W to O1 again, just like last time. Nothing's changed now. From here on out, it's the same concept. And what I do is I measure what that course was. So this time, it's 032. 
is the alteration of course required in order to maintain a CP of two miles if I was altering course five minutes later? And if you think about it, that makes sense. Instantaneously, we took an alteration of course to 026. We wait five minutes. We have to go further. Makes sense. Course was 032. Now again, you might be given a delay time. Now you need to alter speed so as to maintain that minimum CPA of two miles. So what we do for that one is pretty much exactly the same concept. OK, what I do. Is I say, OK. Draw my two mile circle again and I'll just keep it at 1225. Draw two mile circle around it. Extend the away line and I'll extend it by the same amount because it's the same time alteration. Gives me a point there. That gives me position A1 there. And now what I do, slowing down, it's going to cross more ahead again. So obviously I would alter it like that. Then again, just like last time, I parallel that back through A. And this time, where it crosses the original WO line, just like last time, that's O1. Again, no joining of A1 to the triangle. You can see there's a complete dead space there between the two. Go back to the original triangle to make it a nice simple plot for 20 minutes. Measure W01 and find out what your new speed is. So this time I get two. Two miles that right? Yep, two miles there and two miles there. Happy days. So what I do, I measure W01. In this case, I got two miles. Divided by the plot interval, 20 minutes, times it by 60, gives me a speed of six knots. And if you think about it, it makes sense. The longer you leave it, the more you're going to have to slow down to get them to pass the same distance ahead of you. Again, you can measure O01 and W01 as a cross check to make sure you've done that right. Now, that was all done to find a course to steer to get a CPA. Now what we're going to do is find a new CPA if we just altered course with an instantaneous alteration to something else. So what we're going to do, this time I'm going to say I'm going to alter course 45 degrees to starboard. OK, so I'm heading 030 and I'm going to alter course 45 degrees to starboard. So I'm going to steer 075 and I'm going to do this just as a very large alteration to show you nice and obviously. OK, what I do, my new course is 075. Take the mouse out of the way. So you don't get professional things like that in the other videos, do you? So 075 from W, because it's still the way of own. You'll have noticed that at no point have we moved anything with A or W, because whenever we move A or W, we're changing the course and speed of the other ship. And I know a few of you have got that ability inadvertently to do it by your own actions, but we can't actually make the other course, the other ship alter course or speed. So again, stick the pin in W, Strike it round to get O1. OK. Now that WO is our new course. And as we said, we're going at the same speed on a course of 075. That's what we have. Then what we do is we join O1 to A. OK. And then we say, right, it's instantaneous. So carry it through A. That O1 to A is the new relative line of approach. 
what you do now is you find the point of perpendicularity between the cross in the middle and that new relative line of approach. And that there is the new point of CPA. OK. And again, you would find the TCPA, which you may be asked in this one, to say, OK, how do I get the TCPA and the CPA? Well, to get the distance, you simply just measure it. So in this case, I got 4.8 miles. And to get the TCPA, we use the same format. A to CPA, so in this case, 3.6. So we do, I'll just write it here. A to CPA divided by O1 to A, because that's the new relative line of approach. That's the new line in the triangle. So that's six miles. A to CPA was 3.6. And then we times that by the plot interval. The plot interval in this case was 20 still because we're still in the original triangle. So we do 3.6 divided by 6 times 20 gives us 12 minutes. And if you think, that's how far we went in 20 minutes. So that looks about right for being about 12 minutes. Happy days. And that's how you get the CPA and TCPA from an alteration of course. OK. Now, they may also ask you, find the CPA and TCPA with instantaneous alteration of speed. OK, they could ask that as well. Now, oh, I've wrote it twice. There we go. With an instantaneous alteration of speed. So we would do that again in the same way. What's our new speed? Well, our new speed, let's say we've slowed down to nine knots. Yeah, because we've seen what six knots does already. There's no point doing that. So nine knots. That would mean my WO in three in 20 minutes would be three miles because it's three quarters of it. So I would plot from W where my new O1 is. Because now, W to O1 is my new way of own. Then I join O1 to A. And then because it's instantaneous, I'm just going to carry it straight through A, down like that. OK, so how do I get the CPA again? Find the point of perpendicularity with the original line. That there is your CPA. So measure the CPA. Get a CPA of one, yeah, one mile. To get the TCPA, we're going to do A to CPA divided by O1 to A times the plot interval. So, A to CPA, when we measure that, again, use your dividers, it'll be a bit more accurate than a compass, but never mind. So I've got 5.6 ah, again. 6.0 divided by O1 to A is going to be 3.3 times 20. So do 6 divided by 3.3 times 20, 36 minutes to get a TCPA if we slowed down to 9 knots. So that is how we do it if we have an instantaneous alteration of course or speed. Now what we're going to do is look at if we have a delayed time alteration of course or speed. Okay, 
So to do that, what we do, say, right, okay, we'll just do 1225 again. So we measure OA and extend that to 1225. So we extend it by the mile again, same as last time, to get that. And we extend the OA line down. And that gives us A1. Now, what we do is we say, OK, what course am I going to go to? So this time, we'll just do 075 again. OK, so we'll say, find the CPA and TCPA if we alter course to 075 at 1225. So what we do, we take our course of 075 and we run it up through W. Again, always through W for the course we're doing because it's way of all. What we do is we then arc round W O to there like that. And that gives us O1 again. And we join O1 to A. And O1 to A gives us the new relative line of approach of that vessel. Okay. And then what we do is we take that O1 to A line and we parallel it down through A1 and extend the vector like that. And that's the relative line of approach. Again, notice complete dead space. This line isn't continued through. There's a clear defined break there between. Them. Again, just like last time, we find the CPA by just finding the point of perpendicularity to it, like so. And we measure that distance there. So I get CPA of 4.1, which if you remember when we done it instantaneously, we got a bit more than that, which makes sense because now we've slowed down. Oh, sorry, we haven't slowed down. We done it later which means it would have been closer when we made the same operation, so we wouldn't have it. To get the TCPA, we still do the same thing. A1 to CPA. Okay. So that gives us 2.9 miles divided by O1 to A. Okay. Six miles. So that would tell us, times by the plot interval, the TCPA. Exactly the same way as we done last time, but this time we're doing O1 to A divided, uh, sorry, A1 to CPA divided by O1 to A times the plot interval. Okay. Now, the same concept can be asked for a delay time alteration of speed. Okay, so they may ask us to find the CPA with a delay time alteration of speed instead. So what we do, the same concept as last time. We say, okay, let's find the new speed. So we'll do it nine knots again, just to keep the numbers simple. And we'll do nine knots at um 12.25 again. So we extend the OA line again, OA divided by the plot interval times by the difference you want. Get a mile for this one just to keep the numbers simple so we're not constantly working out new numbers. And then we've extended that line to there to get A1. So we slowed down. So what we do is we say, okay, what was a new speed? Nine knots. So we go from three miles to 
gives us 4-1 there. We join 4-1 to A. And again, completely segregate the triangle and then parallel it through A1. Find the point of perpendicularity. And that there gives you the CPA. Okay. So you see, right, okay, what time's that going to be? Well, that was 0.9 of a mile. To get the TCPA, what you can do is say, okay, 0128 was 4.8 miles. Uh, sorry, 8 the CPA was 4.8 miles. 0128 was 3.2. So you do 4.8 divided by 3.2, which is A to CPA divided by 0128 times the plot interval, which was 20, which is going to give us 30 minutes. Happy days. And that is how you would get the CPA and TCPA with an alteration of speed. Now, another one you could be asked, again, you might, you might not, is find the course to pass due north or due south or due east or due west of something based on an alteration. And again, you would do the same principle whether it was delayed or not. What you would do is you say, okay, so I want to pass, let's say this isn't a, a moving target now, it's a fixed object for whatever reason, a lot of tide, but you know, same concept applies. Or you can use it as another vessel if you want, actually, it makes no difference. I want to pass three miles due south of this vessel. Okay. If we're three miles due south of it, it must be three miles due north of us. So we plot a position three miles due north. Like so. And all you would do then is in a similar manner to the CPA, you would take a to that point and then run it back. Now, again, this is instantaneous time. We could do it delayed time as well if we wanted. What we would do is say, okay, the new speed would be where it crosses that line. So that point there would be 01 if we were trying to change speed to pass three miles due south of it. So W01, 1.9 there, gives us our new speed. So 5.7 knots would be required. We'd have to slow down to 5.7 knots or reduce by 6.3 knots to pass three miles due south of that target. If I wanted to alter course to pass three miles due south, instead of having that O1 there, I would have just measured that target there, altered it round, like so, and that would have been my O1. I'll call it O2 just to keep it separate. And that would have been the course to steer to pass three miles due south of it. Okay. You could do due east, due west, anything. All you do, plot the point of interest and then join A to it and arc W-O around. Remember, you can only move O. Okay. And that there would be how you would pass due south, due north of a target or something like that. Another question that gets asked quite frequently is time to resume. Okay. Calculate the time to resume your course so as to maintain a CPA of two miles, three miles, four miles, whatever that. Okay. Now for that, 
I'm going to go back to this delay time alteration sheet that we've used a second ago just to explain it. Time to resume isn't that much of a common one, but because you would never go back to your original course, really, you'd always be wanting to come back more so to get back to your course line rather than just your heading. But concept applies. OK. WO was our original course. When we were heading due north, they relatively tracked down 030. When we were heading 075, they relatively tracked along this line, which is what? 260, something like that, 265. OK. To get the time to resume, remember that point there was CPA. To get the time to resume, what we would do is say, OK, I want to maintain a CPA of what with them. So we'll go for our good old example of two miles again, just to stick with it. The captain said he wants you to resume your course as soon as possible, but keeping a two mile CPA with that other vessel. So what you would do is say, OK, it started on this line coming from O down to A. Then I altered my course and it now tracked along this line. It therefore stands to reason that if it tracked down 030210 when I was heading due north, because they haven't altered course, when I go back to heading due north again, they'd go back to tracking down that line parallel somewhere, wherever they were. Because whenever I go north, because they're heading 284 and I'm heading north, the resultant is 210 between us. So whenever I'm heading back north again, they'll crab 210. So what we do to get the time to resume is we just take that point and we say, OK, let's find the tangent of our two mile circle with that point. OK, now this one just so happens to be very close to, doesn't always have to be. There, OK, so that there again is parallel to this line here. Now, it's not quite the same as the CPA. I don't know if you can make that out. It's there. OK, so what we do to get the time to resume, it's the point where this original relative approach line crosses the new relative approach line from the tangent of the two mile CPA. And to get the time to resume, what you do is you measure from A or A1. Now, in this case, remember, A1 was 1225. This would work equally if you didn't have a delay time, by the way, guys. And what you would do is you would say, OK, A1 to time to resume was 2.7 miles. OK, so A1 to the time to resume divided by O1 to A, because that's the parallel relative approach line for this. OK, that's going to give me the distance as a factor of my current triangle. So I times that by the plot interval. OK, so A1 to time to resume was 2.7 miles. So I'm going to do 2.7 divided by O1 to A. Six miles times the 20 minutes. So I say 2.7 divided by 6 times 20 is 9 minutes. So the time to resume would be 9 minutes after 12.25. So it's going to be 12.34 would be the time to resume, which wasn't quite the same as the CPA, because when we done the CPA, the TCPA was... I think it was 2.8, was it? 2.8, 2.93. So it's a little bit further. I'm not sure if you can quite make out. We're not quite the same point there. Nice and blurry. Lovely. And that would be how you would do the time to resume. OK. Now, one other question that gets asked is how far down a line would you be at a certain point? Okay, so 
suppose I said I found out the way this question is usually asked is what's the range and bearing of this vessel when another vessel is at its CPA? So obviously for that, you would find the TCPA of the other vessel and find what time it was. Suppose the CPA of the other vessel was in, I don't know, 42 minutes. OK, well, no, we'll say 25 minutes. 28 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever you want. OK, how long is this one? That's 20. We'll say 25 minutes for argument's sake. OK, so we want to know how far down that line we would be in 25 minutes. So what I do is I measure O1 to A. And again, you'd use the same concept if it was a delay time. You just do it from A1 as along instead. So you measure O1 to A, six miles. So in 20 minutes, I do six miles. So I do six divided by 20. Then I times it by the time I want, the 25 minutes extra gives me 7.5 miles. So I measure that 7.5 miles and I plot it from A. Okay. And that point there is where the vessel would have been 25 minutes after that instantaneous alteration, of course. Now, if it was a delay time alteration, what I would do is the same sort of concept. I would just run it from that A1 position instead. OK, so I'd have had my A1 position there and the relative approach line along there like that. I'd have just done it at that point instead. Okay? So if you think of the time to resume one I've done it on, just as an example, W01 A, that was six miles. So in 25 minutes, I need to go 7.5 miles. I would still do exactly the same concept. Measure it from there, but I'd lay it off from A1 like that. And this time, that is where the target would be 25 minutes from the delayed alteration. So that would be 12.50 now. On the previous one, it would have been 12.45 because it was instantaneous. And that's the basics of radar plotting. They will pull all of the different bits into different areas from it, but ultimately it'll resolve either an alteration of course, or speed, delayed or instantaneous, finding a point, finding a time to resume, and a combination of them. So it's not uncommon for them to say, right, okay, alter course for one target, find out where the other target is when that first target you altered for is at its CPA. You would therefore find the CPA of the first target, find the TCP of it, and then find where this one was based on that. It's all just breaking the question down. Okay, If you break it down enough, you'll figure out which points you need to go to.